What if you had one image like this and you could have character consistency and turn it into images like this and this and this and this and I bet you that you haven't seen this before because this is pretty cool. It's uh, well, it's fairly brand new and there is no training necessary. Just plug your image in, start your comfy UI generation and go. That's right, I said Comfy, it's available in Comfy. I mean, this is amazing and it just blows my mind. Hello, you beautiful people. Today I'm in, what well, it's sort of my new studio. So this is my new space. It's a little empty here right now. So I don't know what to put on the walls. Maybe you have some ideas. I'm probably gonna put the YouTube thing here somewhere or just, I don't know, send me something and I'll put it up. Anyway, let's start looking at this thing. It's called Ace++. Oh. And do you know which days are the strongest? Saturday and Sunday. The rest are weekdays. So just a teaser, this is what we're going to be using later on. We have an input image. We have a prompt. Maintain the face and the hat. Man in a red shirt is having coffee in a coffee shop. And that is what we're getting. So yeah, I mean, look at that text. It's still readable. It still looks like the same hat. And that is just from one input image, no training. So what is this? Well, you're going to be able to test it for yourself in a bit in Comfy, but this is Ace++ instruction based image creation and editing via context aware content feeling. That's a lot of words. So this is a research project out of China via Alibaba, I think. There's some demos you can test from their page. All of this is going to be in the description, right? All a lot of abstract and, and cool stuff. So what we're going to look at today is the portrait consistency generation. So in these examples here, for example, here we have Albert Einstein and they say dress the character in the image with elf ears and a wizard's robe, transforming them into a mage character from the fantasy world. It does just that. And they have some other examples. They have Stephen Curry being Superman here. And this is all done without training. So this is not like collecting images, having a Laura and, and training stuff. No, it's just one image in and then you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Now there's a lot of other stuff in here too, but that's going to be for another video because this is all just too much to be honest, but you got some, some local editing, some cool reference editing here, but I'm going to save that. And we're going to look at that in another video. This is pretty cool too. Subject driven generation. We just have an object and you can put that object into different stuff, right? That's pretty cool. Anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to go to this link. Now, this is a Patreon link, but don't worry. It is free. It was locked for my subscribers and released ahead of this video. So if you were a Patreon subscriber, you would be able to see this and use this before I'm recording this. But after this video, it's going to be unlocked and free. So here's a bunch of beautiful images. Some of these you might have seen in the intro. And here's some more examples of, of me, real generated, real gen. I mean, you get the point. So what you're going to do, you're going to go down here and at the bottom, you're going to download this. You're going to drag it into your comfy. You're going to get it here. You're probably going to get a lot of red nodes. You're going to go into your manager, right? You're going to install missing custom nodes. There's going to be a bunch of stuff here. You're going to click them and then you're going to press install. After that, you're going to restart your Comfy UI. You are also going to download Comfy UI Portrait Loras 64.save tensors, place in models Loras. That is from this link here and that will get you to this page. So here you have a file, it's 613 megabytes. You download that, put in your models, Loras. Then you want the flux fill FP8 or the, the, the full 16 one. I'm using FP8, so it's going to be lower on your hardware requirements. You put that into your models slash diffusion models folder. That can be downloaded from Civitai. It's going to look something like this. Download that. That's a hu huge one, 11 gigabytes. I think the FP16 is like 23 or something. Now you are gonna need some of the clip loaders as well, but those can be found from the model manager. So here you have the flux fill, right? And then you have the clip L and the text encoder. Whether you wanna use FP16 or FP8, it's up to you, but you can get them from the model manager and the just search up here, right? And then you can just install them. Same goes with this one. So here you have a, a bunch of text encoders and the VAE, AE.safe tensors can be found for the manager too. And that's the one that goes into your uh, little ro red thing here. And your downloaded LoRa goes into this, but it should be pre-selected. Now that you've got everything installed, 
it's basically ready to go. Now it is fairly demanding on your system. So if you have a, a low VRAM machine, you might have been in a serious world of hurt, but I mean, try it out and see if it works for you. Oh, and by the way, if you can't get this to run on your hardware, just go to Think Diffusion, launch uh, Comfy right here, get one of those ultra machines to get some speed into that 48 gigabytes VRAM. You can click here to get the beta release, which is the latest one, and then just launch. Great if you don't have a machine of your own, everything comes pre-installed, right? And I have an affiliate code in the description at no cost to you. I'm getting a couple of percentages back and you get 20% off one years of TD Pro. So get your models installed, then we're loading an image. The size doesn't really matter because in this instance, I'm actually resizing it here. So we're resizing it to 1024 by 1024. That will give us a crop but I, th I found this was the best solution. I tried doing different versions where I changed the size based on the aspect ratio, but uh, you will see here in a second that we need to do a padding for this image. So our generation will actually be this full area and that we can see that in, in the output that this is actually what we're generating. So this is still in the image. Why is that still in the image? That, that that seems very dumb. Seb, that's just going to take a lot of extra resources. Yes, you're right. But honestly, I didn't find a way to get it working without it because this is the fill model. So it's it's working by filling in the space of, of, a, of an image that's already there. So if I didn't have this in, I couldn't get the, the likeness of the character. Maybe you can. If you can, let me know in the comments below. I would love to improve on this workflow. I think this is a... a a good starting point, but I think a lot of you amazing workflow creators out there can uh, improve on that. So this pinkish area is what's going to be generated. We are writing a prompt and as we saw previously in the, well, the earlier parts of this video, we have maintain the face and hats. We're natural language here. And then I'm changing to man in a red shirt is having a coffee in a coffee shop. We don't have a negative prompt here right now. But here's something, flux guidance is set to 50. So this is set very, very high, right? I tried different settings. I tried using very low. I tried to default 30 for, for flux fill. Didn't, I mean, didn't really work that well. 50 was a pretty good sweet spot, but maybe you can find an even sweeter. I'm using currently here Euler 20 steps CFG one. Again, maybe not the best and optimal settings, but it worked for me. I ran 25 steps for quite some time also, but I lowered this uh, for the workflow. So it could be a little bit faster for you guys. And then you're just gonna need to generate and you get something like this. But bear in mind, you will not always get something like this. Oh, and what's with the image crop you say? Well, because we are generating, we probably wanna crop out only this part, right? So we have an automatic crop that crops out based on uh, the size and, and gives you this, right? So it saves both the stitched image and this image, right? Now the output is going to be heavily dependent on your image input style. Now you can force that uh, either by prompting or LoRa's, but it, it's what's well, going to be a little messy. Uh, let's put another prompt in here. I just ask, ask GPT, chat GPT for something random, generate this. And we have ultra detailed close up portrait of a seasoned warrior with piercing blue eyes, weathered skin marked by battle scars and a solemn expression. Uh, you get the point you can pause and read if you care. If not, we're just going to see the generation here. And uh, let's see if we can keep recording while this is happening. So this is coming in live right now and we can see the preview here. Uh, and if you can't see the preview in yours, you haven't set that. You need to go into the manager and change your preview method here. Now, if you want to do TAESD, you need to download those models from the model manager. You can also do auto here. So here we have our result. It took, uh, well, about 30 seconds. I would say this is similar-ish to me. Again, the results will, will vary. I would say some images are really bad. But the cool thing about this, this, um, well, not the workflow per se, but this technique or ACE++ is that some images are like 100%. They're so amazing that you you, you know, have no idea, you know, what's going on. You can generate this again and see what we get now. But you'll probably want to spend some time generating because like I said, it's going to be very hit and miss. Something I noticed though, 
is the long prompt. It does love long prompts and that is not uncommon for the Flux models at all. It seems that uh, the second image here is looking uh, was looking pretty good in the preview at least. So let's see what we're getting here in our final one. Pretty okay. Sometimes you can notice that when you're zooming in here that the skin is looking a little weird in some of the images. If you get something that you like, I would probably upscale it through an ultimate SD upscale like uh, this one. There are a lot of ways to upscale, but uh, I think that one's easy and gives you good results, right? So let's tr try keep maintain the face and hat and just generate this again. And as you can see here now, it doesn't really work the way that we're asking it to, right? And that's, I noticed, happens a lot of time when you have these long prompts. And if you keep the, the shorter prompts, it's going to kind of revert back to what you have here in the image. So if we just remove all of this and change it to man is wearing blue shirt. Now let's generate this again. Let's see here. We're actually doing this live here now without any pre-prepared prompt or statements or seeds. As you can see, we're actually now, now you can see that the hat is there. The blue shirt is there. So is that a fact of that getting more weight on the prompt or that we just have a, a short prompt in general? I don't know. This is still very much research, but we are getting the hat. The hat is looking very good. Now it gave, gave us a, a, another type of, of brim here. This one's more flat and this one's more curved, uh, but I think it's probably hard for the model to, to, to see that. But apart from that, I mean, Look at the lettering, right? The lettering is, I mean, it, it's sublime. Just look at, look here, this little yellow thing here. Can you see that? Between the P and the H. And if you look here, it's, it's not, I, there's something there, right? And the same with this little end of the P. There's this little tail there, the same tail you can see here. So it's really, really understanding what's going on. And even in my face, I mean, I have a little curve on my mustache. This was, this was a while ago. I have a curve little here on my mustache and it kind of retains it here, a little curve here on the mustache. So it's just amazing what this can do in terms of character consistency. Just live generating this. No trained process on this image. It just spits out new, beautiful, cool images. Again, a lot of hit and miss. Now you can see obviously that we're actually missing the text on the hat here, but it seems to get be getting the face fairly good. So what I would do again, generate a bunch of times and you're going to get something that you like. And if you're trying to force a style, you can try the Loras. It, it, it wasn't too successful for me. Um, what worked best for me was long prompts, right? But if you have an image that is in a different style, let's take this uh, woman here, for example, and let's get one of these long prompts again. And again, I just asked ChatGPT for something random. We have an ultra detailed close up portrait of a mysterious sorceress with piercing emerald green eyes and flowing midnight black hair. Again, here's all of it if you want to pause and read. And we're just going to go and see here now. Now, remember, our input is this illustrated kind of style, right? So as you can see here on the output, it kind of retains the style. So that was my experience overall. The style you put in is the style you get out. And I would assume it's because of the strength of this flux film model. It kind of sees what's in the image and it tries to replicate what's already there. So here we have, I would say it's the same face, but uh, we have a, a different image here. So yeah, test this out. All the information is in the links in the description and I hope you will have fun with it. And please, please, please let me know in the comments how we can improve this because I don't think this is perfect, not in any way, but I think it's a great starting point. And how can we get it to, to get all these beautiful image without rendering this whole mess? Maybe we can have this one in like a smaller part. I don't know. The power of the community, do your thing. Let me know what you can do. I'd love to see it. As always, have a good one. See you in the next video.